if your if the thing is only going, you know, somehow, you kick it into overdrive. That's what praise does. You know, but nonetheless, we must pray. We must pray because if we don't pray, there's a lot of things that are going to pass us by. You know, this example of Elijah is a good story. But why would he pray when the Lord has already promised him? I mean, he was even the man that prophesied it. So why should he pray? Because the last. But he did not. And he prayed instead. You know, so we're going to be praying. Now, I want you to cast your mind back to whatsoever it is that the Lord has promised you. Cast your mind back and see if you have attained. So if you have attained, well, praise the Lord. But if you haven't, then you got to pray. You know, and prayer is a great thing. And Jesus himself, he already knew he had the victory because <laughs> the lamb was slain before the war began. And he knew all the things that he was going to do. In his mind, it's already past tense. You know, because whatsoever the Lord does shall be forever. It's nothing new to him. It's already past tense. But why did he have to pray? Why did he have to get up in the morning and go and pray? Why did he have to, you know, pray and pray and pray? Many times the disciples who wake up, they wouldn't find him. He's in the mountain already praying. <laughs> you know, why? He already knew those things are going to happen. Why did he have to pray? You know, he already knew he's going to get the pearl of great price. He already knew it because he himself said it. He said the kingdom of heaven is like a man, you know, who found some great price. And he went and sold everything he had in order to get it. So he already knew all of that was going to happen. But yet, why did he have to pray? Why was he praying until almost sweats of blood were coming out of his forehead? He already knew he was going to get the victory. But yet he had to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. We must pray. Not only did Jesus even tell them to pray so that they won't enter into temptation. You know, the disciples, their eyes were heavy. They just slept off. When Jesus was in his darkest moment, because he was going to be made sin, and that he knew he would be separated from the Father, which is a no-no. That can't happen. It's never happened. And so he was praying, 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 get through it and everything. He asked the disciples, join me for one hour. <laughs> you know, and they just slept. And, you know, it took Jesus three times as long because those disciples would not help him. If they had gotten in there and prayed with him for an hour, it wouldn't have taken him three hours. I don't know how long it took, but he said he went back for three hours and every time, every three times, every time he came back, you sleeping? Pray with me for an hour. And they slept. Came back. You sleeping? Pray with me for an hour. Maybe two hours. By the time he came back the third time, he said, all right, sleep on now. But I, get, I tell you, if you don't pray, you're going to fall into temptation. <laughs> he told them. And they didn't pray. One of them even bragged. and said, look, I don't care what anybody does. Me? Hey, I'll go to the grave with you. I will never. <laughs> Jesus just laughed. Before the cock crows three, two times, he would have denied me three times. Said, no way. He swore up and down. <laughs> but he did deny the Lord. Because when the Lord said pray, he didn't pray. You know, at the time when they should have prayed, they didn't pray. You know. So that's one side of it. Prayer. There's many aspects of prayer. Pray that you enter not into temptation. You know. Matthew, I mean Luke 21, 36. Pray. What does it say, Luke 21, 36? Pray that you do what? Escape these things. Put it up. 21, 36. You know, pray. Watchful, but also pray always. Maybe counter worthy to escape all these evil things that are coming. And to stand before. Some people are not praying. You know, <laughs> and Jesus told us to pray. And you are not praying. That's another aspect of prayer. But the one I want to focus on right now, and in the next two minutes, I ask you, pray. One that I want to focus on right now is prayer that turns the promises of God into a reality. 
Hallelujah. A prayer that turns, that there are many promises. You know, I don't want to spend a lot of time today to go into those promises. But there are many promises. You know, even promises, you know, like when your children, when they go astray, you know, or your grandchildren, or whoever, you know. The Lord said, look, let me read it to you in Jeremiah uh, chapter 31. This is just an example of many of the promises that we can pray for. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 16 and verse 17. This is just an example. It says, Thus said the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping, and thine eyes from tears. For thy work over those children shall be rewarded, saith the Lord. And they shall come again. From the land of the enemy. Amen. <laughs> and read the next verse. Verse 17. You know, these are some promises. And there is hope in thy end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. Hallelujah. But you think, <laughs> you think, you know, the devil is going to give up easy? No. The Lord has already promised it. But the devil is not going to release his captive. Isaiah 49 and verse 25. Is he going to release them easily? Is he? Huh. No. It's not. 25. Verse 25. He's not going to do it. But, huh, you know, by the force of spiritual arms. Amen. But thus said the Lord, the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. He's not going to give them up. But you're going to take them away from him. The prey of the terrible even shall be delivered. Well, that's many things. Now, you know, the Lord said, I'll contend with them that contend with you, and I will save your children. Can somebody say amen? But you think the devil is going to let your children go? No, no, no. <laughs> the Lord said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no. I'm not letting you go anywhere. <laughs> so the same way today, you know, the Lord already said, your children will come. But you think the devil is going to say, yeah, go? No. <laughs> but you are in a battle. Amen. Because every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. And garments rolled with blood. But this one will be with burning of fire and fuel. You know, we are bringing <laughs> new artillery. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> we are bringing new artillery. Hallelujah. Burning and fuel of fire. We're not dealing, we're not just doing that kind of, you know, loose prayer stuff. <laughs> that one person said one time, you know, drive through prayer. <laughs> we're not, do, that drive through prayer doesn't work. You know, you just come, you know, two seconds, you are praying and you are gone. <laughs> Did Jesus pray for two seconds? <laughs> you know, no servant is greater than his master. You cannot be greater than the Lord. If the Lord spent nights in the mountain praying, you think you're just going to waltz in here and just say a few words and just get it? No. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're not bringing that weak stuff. You know, I love watching basketball and so forth. And some of those great, you know, defenders, you <laughs> They say, get that thing out of here. <laughs> you know, they block those shots when you try to put it in. Now, not, not in my house. Glory to God. So we don't want any of that weak stuff. First Corinthians 16 and 13 tells us, look. You know, what does it tell us? First Corinthians 16 and 13. Put it up for me. Watch ye and do what? Do what? Stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men. I mean, stop letting devil play ping pong with you. Be strong. Hallelujah. Be strong. Ephesians 6 and 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Bring new artillery. <laughs> you know. Prayer. It's one of those things listed there. Praying always with all prayer and supplication for all things. 
praying for yourself too. So we are going to pray. I want you to stand up to your feet if you would. That's it. I want to spend the rest of the time praying. There are some things <laughs> that the Lord has promised. In this mountain, will the Lord make a feast of fat things? Well, why are we not getting the feast of fat things then? In this mountain, shall the Lord cause you to emerge? Well, why haven't you emerged then? You know, in this, I mean, all of these things and so forth, you know. Why then haven't we gotten it? Because we need to pray some more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do I have any prayer warriors in the house? Now, let me see you. Let me see the hands. Prayer, some prayer warriors. Do I have some prayer warriors in the house? Glory to God. Well, if you don't know how to pray, <laughs> the devil is going to keep some things away from you. Even though the Lord has promised it. You know, it's just, just the way it is. Prayer, steadfast prayer, can unlock the promises of God, bring them to reality. You know, otherwise, it would just be a promise. It's just a promise. But let me also tell you this before we begin to pray. Something is not a promise unless you know it was promised. Hello? Let me say that again. It is not a promise if you don't know that it was promised. That's number one. First of all, you must know that it was promised. Because if somebody said it and you didn't know it was a promise, then it's not a promise to you. But once you know the promise, that's number one. Know the promise. Number two, it's not going to be a reality unless you pray it through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, there are some promises that are going to happen nonetheless. But even those ones that are going to happen nonetheless, they need prayer. That's why Jesus said, pray ye that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into his harvest. Even though the Lord is coming, we got to pray. Pray that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even though we know that his will is supreme, you still got to pray. Jesus teaches this throughout the scriptures. I don't want to preach too long today, but it's all there. We got to pray. So here's what you are going to do with me today. We are going to pray. Hello? <laughs> Pull up your pants. <laughs> Pull up your... Look, that's how we say it in Nigeria, you know. You know I, I can't say the Yoruba thing, but... Pull up those pants, <laughs> you know. Put on the girdle, you know. I mean... Quit you like man already. Why let the devil play ping pong with you? God gave you a promise. Don't let the devil have it. Amen. Now, we need to emerge this year. I'm not just talking physical things, material. I know most of the time when you talk physical and material things, people shout. People shout a lot. When you talk spiritual things, people don't shout too much. Well, whichever one you want to shout for today, you know, and I exhort you, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things that we are chasing now, you know, you know, the believers, we are chasing the same things like unbelievers. It's the same things. That's why Jesus, he spent a long time talking about it in Matthew chapter 6. Believers are chasing the same things. I don't believe us are chasing. But you know how the Pentecostals are doing it? You know how? We are trying to get it with speaking in tongues. We pray in tongues. The same thing that the unbeliever is praying for. The same thing we are praying for in tongues. Praying in tongues. Trying to use the Holy Ghost power to get the same things that the unbelievers are chasing after. Jesus said, that's not how to pray. And that's not what you should be seeking after. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So with all you're getting this morning, throw the righteousness of God in it. Amen. If you can put him first in your heart, choose him as your chief joy and all these other things will follow. But that being said, there are some tremendous things that God has promised for you this year in the physical and in the natural. And those we must also pray through. 
because they won't happen unless we pray. Now, let's begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Don't ever mind the person next to you. Begin to pray. If you're, you, many hands went up when I said that they are prayer warriors. And if you said you were a prayer warrior, then don't be silent in this place. Hallelujah. Begin to move around. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. We're going to spend some time in prayer today. We don't do this enough time. We're going to pray. Pray for yourself. And pray for your children. Pray for your spouse. You know. Hallelujah. Pray for your parents too. And pray for your brethren. And pray for the body of Christ. But most importantly, pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. The promises of God that God has promised, let's make them a reality today in our lives through prayer. Hallelujah. Let's not just sit back, relax, eat and drink, and think we're going to get the abundance of rain. Somebody has to pay the price. And Elijah was the one that paid the price. Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah stayed behind and paid the price. Are you willing to pay the price? For your children? For your grandchildren? For your spouse? For your brethren? And for yourself? Hallelujah. Barika to shinda la bahundi skiri makare. Pray! Hallelujah. Some people can't even pray for two minutes. Two minutes prayer, you are already tired. Three minutes prayer, you are already tired. Four minutes prayer, you are already tired. Resa boshe ti kabori la kunda ya. The devil is walking over time. The devil is not tired. Makori ba shanda rabasuria. The devil is not tired. Why should you be tired? Pray! Bring a different kind of artillery. The kind of prayer that will not be denied. Don't take no for an answer. When the heavens are brass, God already released the prayer, the answer to the prayer. But the prince of Persia, we stood that thing 21 days. Don't let any prince of Persia, any prince of Phoenix or prince of Arizona, or wherever you are, if you are watching, don't let the prince of the power of the air withhold your promise. Glory about Shantori Makari Basun. In the name of Jesus, we have the power. We have the power. You know, hallelujah. The Lord said, behold, I give you power. Over all the power of the enemy. Glory to God. Casting down imaginations. The devil doesn't want you. The devil imagine a vain thing against you. Why do they feel in rage and imagine against, a vain thing against the Lord and the brethren of God? Why? Because the devil doesn't want you to have the victory. But we got a victory in the name of the Lord. Be a prayer warrior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And you young folks, don't be looking at the adults and thinking that Oh, yeah, it's just a door that's going to pray. You're, you will be a ping pong if you don't pray. That devil will just be smashing you up and down. But that's not your portion in the name of Jesus. Young and old alike. Linda Basokarina Bashendoriaba. Pray! Every battle of the warrior is with confused knots and garments rolled in blood. But this one, huh, my goodness, 
This is going to be the burning of fuel and fire. We are taking the fight to the devil. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Rebo shandiri masokeri aba. Lundi masori handara bakuri. Lisabo lisabo rita shandiri makwa. We are taking the fight to the devil. Call out the promises of God. Whatever God has told you, point blank. Call it out. Put me in remembrance, said the Lord. Put me in remembrance, said the Lord. Declare it that you may be justified. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. We have that power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. Because we got the power in the name of the Lord. We got the power. You have the power? Do you have the power? Hallelujah. You are empowered by the promises of God. But your prayer is what's going to make it a reality. Pray. Hallelujah. Also pray that you enter not into temptation. Le kando si baruna shetaraba. Le broska teba kuriba shenda raba suria. Oh raba handa. Le saboni arakushere leba kuria basanda. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Pray that you enter not into temptation also. In this year, say the Lord, you will take root downward and you will bear fruit upward. And you will emerge. Oh, you will emerge. Like the butterfly from the cocoon. You will emerge. <laughs> Glory to God. But you got to pray. You got to pray. Prayer is the key. You got to pray. Pray for your children. Glory to God. Jesus even prayed for Peter. He said, the devil has desired to have you and sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. Hallelujah. Jesus prayed for all of us. In John chapter 17. He said, I pray that you take them not away from the world. But that you keep them from the evil one. Because they have a job to do. Hallelujah. So parinda kunda shiri la bosa neria. Ah, lekos, lekos parunda shita la bosa. Amen. Listen to the words of Isaiah, chapter fifty-two and verse two. You know I love this verse. Isaiah fifty-two and verse two. It says, "Shake yourself from the dust. Lose." yourself from the bands around your neck you do it yourself you don't need a pastor you don't need a prophet you don't need the apostle you yourself pray for yourself lose yourself from the bands around your neck there are some women in here that are just overwhelmed <laughs> overwhelmed and yet you are a daughter of zion Lose yourself from the bands around your neck. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Shake yourself from the doors. You don't need to wait for anybody. You can do it. Hallelujah. Yes, Sabonia. Sotesh Maskitanuria. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. 
I want them to put up two scriptures. I've been using this on, you know, some of, some of my other administrations of Clubhouse and so forth, telling people, look, you got to lay hold of these two things, you know. So let's put up, I want us to memorize this as well. Put up Isaiah 50 and verse 7. The two scriptures that we are going to pray for the next two minutes. We're going to pray these two scriptures. The first one is Isaiah 50 and verse 7. And I want you to say it. Say it. For the Lord God will help me. That's a declaration of faith. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. And I will put my game face on. I'm going to set my face like a fleet. Hallelujah. I'm not going to put up with any of the nonsense that the devil is bringing my way. And I know I shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. I will not be ashamed. Because multiple times between Joel chapter 2, 23 to verse 25, he said it at least two or three times. My people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed. And I know that I will never be ashamed. There may be something right now that the devil is saying, aha, aha. Say, he will eat his words because you will never be ashamed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap if you know that. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's one. Memorize that and use it all day long, every day. The next one, hallelujah, is Psalm 118. And let's look at verse 17. What does he say? Hello? What does he say? <laughs> that devil wants to kill you. Because that's his job. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But the Lord said, <laughs> I have come to give you life in abundance. Praise God. You will not die. Amen? Amen? I will leave. But not just leave and just leave and have no purpose. You will declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mr. Christie, come up here, please. You will. And also, Sister Cheesy, come up here. And while I'm at it, Sister Dora, even. <laughs> Praise God. You are traveling? You are traveling on Wednesday. Where are you going? Hallelujah. You know, the eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are his everlasting arms. And he has given his angels charge over you. Right? Wherever you go, you know, the Lord's got those dispatch riders. You are a daughter of the king. Can somebody say Amen. Whether Brazil or wherever else, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So in these, your travels, he's got you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I will send my angel before you, the angel of my presence, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Wherever you go, the Lord is with you. Father, we thank you for your daughter as she goes. <laughs> the devil cannot kill you. <laughs> because I will not die, but I will live, and I will declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are not afraid. Jesus said in John 8, 29, he said, look, I'm not alone. Why? Because I do always those things that please the Lord. My Father is with me. Hallelujah. May our actions and our words please the Lord. Amen. The Lord go with you, Sister Christy. It is well with you. You will go in peace. You will come back in peace. Your family and everything around you will be in peace. There will be no anxiety. In Jesus' name. Because he said, I will give you rest. And I will give you peace. 
In Jesus' name, amen. But she says, Cheesy, you ask for prayer because it's your birthday tomorrow. But that's your twin right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, she didn't know that, but uh, <laughs> she said, well, can I have prayer? It's my birthday tomorrow. I said, oh, why, sure. You know, but it's also your birthday tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, when it's our birthdays, you know, we, you know, we like gifts, right? Do you like a gift from the Lord? <laughs> Put your hands together, everybody. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to use them as a point of contact for everyone that's, you know, birthdays in April. We don't do this in person anymore. I just do it on, on uh, WhatsApp anymore. But, you know, since she asked for prayer. And I remember, I said, well, it's also Sister Dora's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, so let's stretch your hands towards them and ask the Lord for a special blessing upon them. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And what things soever you... It's your birthday also? Tomorrow? It's her birthday tomorrow. How come I didn't know that? Hey, I don't have that in my list. <laughs> oh, wow. Praise the Lord. What's your name, young lady? Ruby? That's a beautiful name. You know that? Beautiful flower. Praise God. I mean, look at these wonderful blessings that we have. There is a package of blessings that the Lord has in store for both of you. Oh, actually, three of you now. Praise God. Receive it in Jesus' name. You know, the Lord is always dishing things out. It's only for us to receive. Some people think, oh, well, God is not. God is always dishing out. It's left for you to receive. To receive in Jesus' name. It's as cheesy. Receive, Sister Dora. And receive, Ruby, in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Happy birthday to you. You praise him, you may come up. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Give it all a hand clap, everybody. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, that's the end of uh, this segment. The praise team will now lead us into the last segment of praise and worship. And during that time, you may give your offering if you so wish to do. Hallelujah. Take it away, praise team. Shall we sound our favors together to the Lord? Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Amen.
66, if you count the interview, right? <laughs> 1966. Uh, let me look and see who was born here. <laughs> so you are very, very welcome. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the offering. We give you, Lord, the praise and the glory. We will use it by the grace of God to the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' name. And the Lord bless every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me see. He's not here for the first time, but is anybody here for the first time? Well, why is that? What happened? Why are we not bringing people into the service? <laughs> Invite people to worship with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to close the service now. Let's all stand and say the grace together. You have a great week. Remember this word. Go with it and use it. Continue to pray. 
pray the promises of God through. Amen. Remember the word that you have received for her today. Making the promises of God a reality through prayer. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and his sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And let's say that prayer that's right behind that. Thy kingdom come, O Lord, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Have a blessed day and a great week, everyone. Lord bless you.